So we're back um, with Jeremy for Evening Worship. Um, what are we talking about tonight? Yeah, so every evening we've been working through Romans, and um, we've made it to Romans 6. Okay. Okay. Which, and so we use Romans 6.23 in evangelism to get people to Jesus, but if we look at the context of this chapter, we see that Paul is using it for the people who are already in Jesus, who are in Christ. And so he's helping them see that, you know, every time you sin, not just because of your sin nature, but even when you choose sin as a believer, it will be death for you. It will separate you from the life that is given to us in Christ. Um, and so before we dive in, I just want to pray for a minute, ask that God kind of guide our steps and see if we can condense what is a really rich passage into just a few minutes. So let's pray. Lord, this is your word, and we are grateful for it. We thank you for technology that allows us to share it with one another, even when we cannot meet, to even reach people that we would otherwise not meet. And we just ask that you would speak more than me, more than Jen, that you would govern our speech, and that you would guide our steps. Lord, help us to find you in the text of the scripture. We ask in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Um, so I guess the big question for all of us right now is the coronavirus. How, what does the Bible have to say to me about what I'm in, where mm -hmm. I'm finding myself? And for me, um, I thought this was so appropriate because when I first was confronted with this new paradigm that we're in, I was immobilized. I didn't know what to do or how to process it. Right. You know, I mean, did, is that kind of where you found yourself? Definitely. It's a lot of change. It's hard to process and, you know, <clears throat> remaining faithful and um, just keeping hope and, and keeping um, routines, I think, is a right. little bit different. Um, right. You know, trying to, trying to keep your priorities in Christ and with all the flux and with all the change is definitely difficult. And sometimes right. stress also just um, is a hard thing to process for me. Right. I know sometimes that leads me to lose my temper and to do things that I probably shouldn't do. <laughs> um, you know, but the, the study in God's Word and just <clears throat> relaxing and soaking up God's Word really gives me perspective and helps me to um, focus and stay on the right path. Right. And I love that because that's exactly what Paul tells the Roman church. Um, he's, I'll just dump, jump in. He, he opens the, the chapter with a question. He does this a lot. And he says, okay, what shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? And he almost uses a swear word, if I can say that. It's just the, the most ultimate exclamatory word he can, he can use in the Greek language. So in verse 2 he says, By no means may we never continue in sin that grace may abound, because how can we who died to sin still live in it. And so what I feel like is that relates to where we find ourselves because he's going to tell them, you have to remember from where you have come. You have to remember that, yes, God is still on his throne. You have to remember that he is governing his universe. And just because we're seeing something that we've never seen before mm -hmm. and we hope we never see again, we have to know and go back to the truths that we once held to and know that they are still as vibrant and still as real as where we find ourselves now. That's powerful. Yeah. <clears throat> so, you know, I'm a little, like, when it says we were buried therefore with him by baptism, um, being buried with him in baptism, what, what, what does that mean? Right. Yeah, let's read the passage for those who don't have their Bibles. Again, we're in Romans 6, but it says in verse 4, We were buried therefore with Jesus by baptism into death, in order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. And so what he's going to do in just these 14 verses is help us see how closely we are aligned with Jesus. Um, so often for the believer, you kinda, you're kind of you excited, you come to faith in Christ, and in that initial moment you're converted, you're baptized, you do all the things that the church instructs you to do, and then we tend to, like in any relationship, begin to coast and just kind of ride it out. Um, but what he's saying is that, you know, you are baptized into Christ. You are buried with Him. So when He went into the grave, you went with Him. And then he's going to say in verse 5, you're united with Him in this death, and how much more so are you united with Him in His resurrection? And so it'd be easy to just say, okay, Jesus did what He's supposed to do. I'm going to do what I'm supposed to do. And we're just going to kind of walk 
alongside of each other. And he's saying, no, not at all. You're tied into Jesus. You are inextricably bound to Jesus so that what he did, you identify with. His burial is yours. His resurrection is yours. And so all the power that was available to him to do those things is now available to us. So oh, that's cool. Yeah. Um, and so it's, again, a great encouraging word for where we find ourselves because it is so easy to grow hopeless, to grow despondent, to be fearful. And even outside, we're going to get through this. God's going to carry us past this virus. But even on a day-to-day -day basis, we can slip into despair or depression. We can slip into fear. Um, but this word is so important because if we go back to what we know is true, if we remember the truths of Scripture, if we align ourselves with who Jesus is and know that all the power that He needed to be resurrected from the dead is available to us, then we know we can have power over sin, over death, over the grave. And we know that in our heads and we say it with our mouths, but oftentimes it doesn't make it into how we feel. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of what I found in this passage is we have to be able to get past our feelings and know in our head and in our heart that while I may feel unsaved, while I may feel scared, I know the truths of the gospel. And, and so it helps me in that. That's, <clears throat> that's really important, too, from the standpoint that, you know, sometimes, <clears throat> especially in a crisis like this, you know, economically or whatever, mm -hmm. you see some people that are struggling, and I guess they see some people, you know, if you look out in the world, there are some people who maybe were prepared for coronavirus, and they've got money in the bank, and they don't have to worry, right. you know? Right. And it's really easy to sink into comparison and, thinking, you know, maybe that um, if you if you were less prepared or whatever, that maybe God's not taking care of you or, you know, you're not you're not um, gonna have the same promises that originally, you know, our beliefs say that we have, which right. is hope and that God's always gonna care for us, always gonna provide for us and stuff like that. Right. You know, it's easy to say, well, God's taking care of that person, but is he really taking care of me? And that's, that's that fear talking. Right. That this really helps, you know, to give us hope that, you know, God's promises are still there and they're, they're strong and they're dependable and we, can, we don't have to be afraid. Right. And so he eliminates all competition because if he's taking care of death and we've conquered that, then surely he can handle a virus. Yeah. Surely he can help us through whatever things we find ourselves in. Um, he says in verse 7, He who has died, he has set us free from sin. So if we can have victory over sin, and that's kind of the beauty of this passage, it's so easy to, even as a believer, think, well, this is who I am. This is the sin that is my pet sin. I can't get past this. This is just what I do. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm just going to have to live with that because we think, okay, I'm a sinner, I know I'm saved, but I'm still, it's that kind of already but not yet kind of thing. Where we know we're saved, we know we're sanctified, we know we're justified, we know we're going to go into heaven one day and ascend and have that same power that Jesus had to leave this earth and go and live with him in heaven all, all to help forever. forever. Um, but what does that have to do with now? How can I have that power now? And so what he says is that you... Um, are being raised from the dead with him. Death no longer has dominion over you, in verse 9. He says the same about sin in verse 14. Sin will have no dominion over you. So you can't make the excuse that this is who I am, this is the sin I will do, this is how it is, because you are so closely aligned with Jesus that you are no longer bound to that. You know, before, I think of, I just had a newborn, our fourth little baby, he's so cute. Uh, and just doing what he should do. He's sleeping and eating, sleeping and eating, poop, sleeping and eating. He does it over and over. Um, but it's funny because he's still young enough that his head, he can't keep it up. He'll kind of swing it up, mm -hmm. and then it flops right back down where it was. And I thought that's a great illustration for how our sin operates on us. Before Christ, we had that bent. We would flop our head up in, in our good works and try to do what we should, but it's always going to flop back down into that sin. When you are in Christ, though, you are now no longer a newborn. You have this power that was available to Jesus, and you can hold your head up high because you know that no matter what the sin, no matter how strong it is, He has provided a way of escape, mm -hmm. and He will allow that you have victory in that place. Um, 
something for me that really helps is, you know, I have been working out lately. You can't tell, obviously, but um, it's become a routine of mine. And I have to remind myself, I like to swim. And when I swim, I aim to do 40 laps. Well, I've done 40 laps before. Mm -hmm. So I know it can be done. Yeah. And so on occasion, though, I'll get to maybe 30 and say, oh, I just don't have it in me. I, I got I got to quit. But I have to remind myself, no, you've done this. You can do this. You're even at a better place now to do the 40 than you were before. And so mm -hmm. I think that's the same thing Paul's saying. You are there. You have been buried, yes, to sin, but you have been raised by what Jesus has done. And if that is true, anything in between is able to be tackled because of what Jesus has given you, the power he's given you in the Holy Spirit. So it's just a real encouraging word. Obviously, we can't get into all that it has, um, but I'll just take you to verse 12 and we can wrap it up. Okay. Because of all of that, if we can just remember that, he says in verse 12, let not sin then reign in your mortal body to make you obey its passions. Because of what you remembered about Jesus and what he has done for you and how closely aligned you are to him, do not present your members to sin as instruments for unrighteousness, but... Present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life and your members to God as instruments for righteousness. So this body that he has bought is now under new control. There's a new owner mm -hmm. and he has changed everything so that you no longer have to be bound to sin. When we get into the latter part of this chapter, we're going to see that we have almost a new slave owner. He equates being under sin as being a slave to that sin. Mm -hmm. And he, in human terms, is going to say, okay, well now you're a slave to Jesus. You are bound to righteousness now. Just like you were chained to doing what is sin and wrong, now you are bound to do what is right and able to be done because of the Holy Spirit living in you. So he says in verse 14, sin will have no dominion over you since you are not under law but under grace. And so I pray that's an encouraging word for you guys um, as we just are kind of finding our way through this new uh, world we, we find ourselves in. Um, but even when we get past this, and even today, I just want to encourage you that you can have victory over sin because you are bound up in who Jesus is and what he did. It's not just that once in a moment opportunity. It is an everyday action on your life as you live with him. He gives you that victory good stuff that is that's awesome I, <clears throat> I think it's it's great because it, it mentions all the members so deals with sin in your mind mm -hmm. the doubts the fears that we have right. it deals with what we do with our behavior right you know and our choices so covers all the bases and yeah God helps yeah. us with all of it one illustration I thought was really helpful and I'll end with this is kind of the image of a conjoined twin where you know you have now the same mind you're of the same heart you're bound even at your feet you're walking in in line with jesus you're tied up to each other and That's so awesome. um we we tend to want to kind of separate from him and do our own thing but the more we can go back to remembering that we are in christ the more victory we can have over anything even corona so take that <laughs> thanks guys awesome